Finding this Siabonga ceramic studio in Woodstock is like discovering a pharaoh's chamber. These African totems are so richly drawn into jars, bowls and vases that orders keep rolling in from as far as Germany and the US. Siabonga, it's been six years since you started your business and already you're one of the most sought after artists in your craft, locally and internationally. Why do you love working with ceramics? I love it because I grew up doing art, like I was so good in drawing and stuff. And then when I was went to the college and introduced to ceramics, and then that's when I realized that when it comes to ceramics, there's a lot to choose from. And it's sort of challenging as well, man. It's not like uh, you do it and that's it. You need to put it on the kill. You need to wait for the kill to come out, and then you never know the results as well. So when it comes out from the kill, and then that's where the magic start to see, like boom. Five years ago, Sia flew to New York in search of new business. He found markets for his work, was inspired by the Big Apple's famous work ethic, and returned wanting to share the spotlight. I can see a theme with some of these larger items, but what's the story behind these sculptures? Uh, the story behind these ones, uh, we're sort of like trying to collaborate with other artists whereby we want to introduce the rest stuff here in our workshop as well, because for us it feels like it's hard for any other black artist to have a showroom. For us, we sort of like provide them whereby they can put their stuff here, they can be showcased, they can be bought as well. So this is where we give them the platform to showcase their stuff here. Sia and his brother Madoda are from a family of creatives. Their father was a self-taught artist, and though it wasn't his profession, he planted the seed from which their work grew. You seem quite focused there. What are you working on? Um, here I'm making a beer pot, which is uh, a collaboration between me and Siabonga. So we, what we do is I throw the pot, which is the making of the pot, and then it's going to be doing the decoration, and then we're going to fire it. When did you realize that you wanted to be an artist? For me, I think we were both uh, born with a gift. So from a very early age, I, I always knew that I will become an artist. It was just a matter of time. I entered for a competition in 2000, it was a ceramic competition, so I won the second prize in the whole continent. So I think for me, that was the moment that taught me that this is my destiny. After working for others, Sia furthered his business studies, went freelance, and the world began to notice his art. So where do we begin? So we're using my hand to create the shapes and stuff, like yeah. pressing it yeah. from the inside. Yeah. I just flow with, this, with, the, with the lines and... Mm. Is there a certain amount of pressure that you have to put in so that it doesn't go in and cave in? Yeah, but when you press it, you don't really like press it too hard. Yeah. But you just go slowly as you go and then you can yeah. just... Yeah. You've got your hand on the inside whereby you're sort of like holding so that it doesn't like go inside the pot. Yeah. So with this shape that I'm doing now, I'll draw on this like this and then this way my design is going to go accordingly to where I've pressed. This master also teaches adults with disabilities to make ceramics, and he takes them to market to help sell their product. This, this actually feels like melted chocolate. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing about it is if you're gentle enough, um, if you make a mistake, you're able to push it back out yeah, from the yeah, inside. Yeah. Kind of like life. <laughs> <laughs> Sia doesn't plan his designs. He lets the clay talk to him, and together they create magic. Wow, this is very freehand and very, yeah. you know, free flowing. More like a flowy stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at Madura's one, and he's yeah. so technical, like everything is so symmetrical. Sure. Wow. <laughs> so, what are some of the techniques that you use? I use the uh, carving technique, which is I use the uh, scaffold knife yeah. to cut first, and then I would use it to cut on the side, and then I would use this carving tool yeah. to finish and clean up the, 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 the design. So, but doesn't this take time? It, it used to take time, but because of now, um, I've, I've been doing it for years and the experience, and also for me, I feel like it's not about time, it's about enjoying the process. You know? Yeah, that's beautiful. The freely creative way the Fani brothers work is infectious. Harmony surrendered to it with mixed results. So apparently my crown looks more like a flower. Sure. <laughs> so I think that just means I'm naturally royalty. <laughs> Funny enough because my claim name is Chawe Okauto Paolo, which is 
we are the kings and stuff. So yes. <laughs> sort of like I could say that is it that connection. Yes, I, I felt stuff. it. I felt it. Because yeah, honestly, my stuff <laughs> is, uh, with me, well, well, what inspires me is like nature, like whatever goes. As you can see, this is a flow. You can tell the river flow dry season in the Eastern Cape where yeah. I come from, in Ofivaba. So all those things, man, anything but nature comes from that. Now when I'm done with my masterpiece, what do we do oh. next? Now what you do next, we're using the pebble stones, whereby you're doing the burnishing, and then from this point, it goes like to be like a bone dry, from being bone dry, what you do, we put a cooking oil on to make it shine, and then from there, we take it to the kiln for the baking, and then from there, we can use smoke fire. With every piece uniquely decorated by hand and reflecting African land and seascapes, the smoking effect adds the look of a pot that's been cooked in over a hundred open fires. To make them oven, microwave and dishwasher safe, each vessel is glazed with a lead-free solution. One of the most popular designs being the Umkomboti pot. Okay, so we got our hands dirty and did some hard work. So now we can enjoy some traditional beer the traditional way. But how do we do it? Traditionally, you, as the youngest, mm. have to go on your knee and give it to me so that I can drink it and pass and it to him. And then oh, you just okay. take a sip and then give it to me. All right. Hey, you know, it's cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> This did not taste the way I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we do it. Yeah. Did you guys share moments like this when you were growing up? And what is your fondest memory? Um, there's quite a lot of memories, but all for me it was when I was taking him to the mountain when he was yeah, going yeah. to become a man. <laughs> so I was the eldest at the time, so I had to look after him. Yeah. And so that's that's that memory for me I, I still cherish today. Yeah, for me as well, at the same time, to be taken care of, and that's where you become to, make, to be a manhood, and then he showed me some stuff, like how to be man, and, and all those kind of things, and so yeah, it's been great, man, and too much love and respect. Yeah, that's all I can say, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for sharing your craft with me and continue to inspire and empower people. But this beer was not brought here for us to just look at it, so shall we? Sure. <laughs> <Take care. laughs> Here's to the best of Africa.